It's signing week at 24 seven sports and we are taking a look at Florida's 2024 class. This recruiting cycle was a chaotic one for the Gators in which the coaches had to fend off flips and decommitments. The class now ranks 15th in the recruiting rankings and eighth in the SEC. Now to break it all down, Jacob Rudner of Swamp 24 seven and Cooper Patagna join me guys. We'll start with DJ Lagway, the jewel of this class ranked the number three overall player in the nation and our Max Preps player of the year. Jacob, how excited is Gator Nation to welcome the top quarterback in this class to Gainesville? Yeah, Grace, needless to say, they are very excited to welcome DJ Lagway to Gainesville, and I would say it's hard not to be. He's 24-7 sports number one overall quarterback in the 2024 class for a reason. This is a guy with generational talents, big arm, uh, can mo can be mobile and run, uh, which is something that Billy Napier really likes in his offense. Uh, put up huge numbers as a senior in high school and somebody who I think can be expected to contribute immediately. I'm not going to say that he's going to be Florida's starter next year. As a matter of fact, that would be quite surprising with Graham Mertz returning. However, I do expect DJ Lagway to be a factor in the Gators offense to some degree. The Gators will build in packages for him and allow him to show off his talents as a true freshman acclimate to the college game and most importantly learn from Graham Mertz but the expectations and the excitement are very high in Gainesville for a guy as talented as Lagway. Everything Jacob said he did he did a beautiful job dissecting that one but DJ Lagway I mean you think about the prospect right this is a guy that we've kind of compared a little bit to Anthony Richardson they're not clones of each other but when you think about the physical upside of the individual player at the quarterback position nobody has a higher ceiling than DJ Lagway. The other thing I love about DJ Lagway, he's gotten better and better every year in every major statistical category. Completion percentage going from 55 to 67, all the way to 72% as a senior. 59 touchdowns, eight INTs through the air, took care of the football, also had almost a thousand yards rushing. So he can do a little bit of everything. And I agree with Jacob. I think if you're looking kind of uh, for a comparison of DJ Lagway and what the trajectory looks like in year one. I think Avery Johnson, Kansas State, how they utilized him with Will Howard, who's now at Ohio State. I think you're going to see DJ Lagway. He's just too talented to keep off the field. So with that being said, yes, if you're a Florida Gators fan, you should be ecstatic about DJ Lagway, your future at the quarterback position. His new teammate, LJ McCray, says Lagway has that it factor. And of course, McCray is the other five star in this class on the defensive side of the ball. The top D lineman in the country recently won the Lineman of the Year Award at the All-American Bowl. Coop, what, what kind of impact will he make on the DL room? I think he'll make an immediate impact there, too. So you got two guys ranked inside the top five. Listen, if, if you're ranked that high, we expect you to contribute early. This is a guy, another guy that's an ascending player, only had single sacks, under five sacks as a junior. He's got 13 sacks as a senior. He showed up to the All-American Bowl in San Antonio a couple weeks ago and was one of the best players there, really dominated. You think about the length that he has with his frame, the size, he can kind of overwhelm you. And he is really just starting to really kind of grow into the position as well. So the arrows pointing up with LJ McRae, we don't say it lightly. That's a hard position to crack in the SEC. But you think about what Florida's got on the defensive line, especially Kelby Collins coming back, another highly ranked guy that they had in 2023. You pair him with a guy like LJ McRae, a lot to be really excited about with Florida in that front seven moving forward. This is an important part of Florida's class. LJ McCray is somebody who Florida will need to contribute immediately considering how things went for its defensive line last year. Lack of pressure consistently. The group really didn't get after the quarterback the way that it needed to. Also struggled at times to stop the run. And this is a guy who could make an immediate impact. LJ McCray, versatile defensive lineman, somebody who Florida views as a candidate to play both inside and outside, currently checks in at that 260, 270 pound range. I'll be interested to see if Florida chooses to put some weight on that frame, maybe move him around a little bit. A guy who I think profiles well to play at the three tech position as well as on the edge, which is where he'll start. Uh, and, and somebody that there's a lot of reason to be excited about in the same way that there is for DJ Lagway. Top ranked defensive lineman in the class, uh, a talented guy who should contribute immediately as a true freshman. Now, Billy Napler doesn't add fillers to his class, but this is still a small class, just 19 players. Coop, who are some under-the-radar prospects you think could be an immediate impact? Well, I don't know about under-the-radar, but I'm going to go with Caden Daniels. This is a guy that we had inside the top 247 from the state of Mississippi. And you think about him from a production standpoint, had 2,000 yards in each of his last two seasons, then a big physical frame. He's still under six foot, but he's hovering around 200 pounds. But he is a physical north-south runner, a build speed guy in the open field. 
is not afraid of contact. And you think about Florida you, losing Trevor Etienne in that backfield, still have Montrell Johnson. So a lot to like there for Florida in the Gators. I think this is a really kind of a sneaky pickup, if you could say that, for a top two, four, seven running back. But I think Kanan Daniel is going to be one of those guys as a freshman, going to have a big role in Gainesville. Cooper, you mentioned somebody who's not afraid of contact as a true freshman, and I will do the same on the defensive side of the ball with four-star linebacker Aaron Childs. Uh, this is a heavy-hitting linebacker, somebody who I think Florida is really excited about, especially with his ability to potentially get on the field again as a true freshman. That's kind of a theme with this class, and he's no exception. The number six player at his position, uh, Florida will be able to utilize him inside. He's solid in coverage. Uh, but I go back to the ability to just make big hits. This is a guy who is not afraid of contact. He has a punishing style of play, which is something that I think Florida has really been lacking over the last couple of years under Billy Napier, that true hard-hitting linebacker. We've seen it from Shamar James, who's been really good, but James was hurt last year, and we'll have to see what comes back, uh, you know, coming off of a knee injury. But this is, you know, Aaron Childs and maybe even Miles Graham are two guys who I think could really... Uh, change the direction of that room for the Gators and, and help them take a step forward in their third year under Nate here. Now, guys, I mentioned it off the top, but this was really a chaotic cycle for, for Billy Napier and his staff. They had to play defense during the December signing period. They lost eight blue chip commits. This was a class that ranked number three nationally at one point in the season, but ultimately fell out of the top 10. So, Jacob, what has been or what was Napier's message to his recruits during this process? That was a pretty straightforward message. He said that if you don't want to be at the University of Florida, we don't want you to be at the University of Florida. And he stuck to that throughout the entirety of the cycle. Said it several times during signing day, early signing day, I should say. And I'm sure we'll reiterate that point uh, here in a few days. Billy Napier knows what's going on. Florida is kind of a tough sell right now. He's 11 and 14 through two seasons as its head coach, but they have to continue to stack talent. And so basically the message must be, if you don't want to be here we can't have you and i think that that's actually uh, pretty reasonable florida needs guys who are going to want to stick with the process uh, see things through in a challenging situation uh, and if they're unwilling to do that with it so easy to depart programs with the advent of the transfer portal that only makes the job harder and so uh, do i think part of that is rationalizing a lot of big departures from florida's class sure but at the end of the day i, I do agree with the sentiment that florida needs guys who are going to be as committed to its program as possible as it tries to turn around a ship that has not been heading in the most promising direction over the last two seasons. Jacob said that word process. I think that's what Billy Napier needs to sell, right? That's been the message, trust the process, something he learned under Nick Saban during his time at Alabama. Here's the thing, Florida's 11 and 14 in their first two years. Something's gotta give. They gotta win football games in year three. Mike Norvell went through a very similar situation in Tallahassee at Florida State. He's been able to right the ship. So if he can learn anything, from Mike Norvell is what Jacob said. You got to continue to stockpile talent, right? The clock stops for no man. So Billy Napier can't just wait to win football games. This is something that he's going to have to continue to build out long term as well. But if you're asking what is the biggest thing that they need to accomplish, it's just winning football games. And, and guess what? Here's the other thing. They've done well off the field, right? You mentioned that top 10 class top five class at a time that was ahead of Florida State in Miami so they are doing the right things in the state of Florida they got to execute and they got to get it over the finish line if they win football games they'll get the wind at their back they need that momentum in a big time way an important year three for coach Billy all right Jacob Rudner and Cooper Patagna thanks so much and for more Florida football and recruiting news check out swamp247.com Jacob and his staff they got you covered on all things Florida Gators all year long <laughs>